Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with a review of the Sharper Image DX1 Micro Drone. Uh, this is basically just a nano quad. Uh, pretty neat look to it, cool design. Um, however, I've got a lot of problems with this thing, so um, I'll try not to bash on it too hard, but there is a lot to say about this one. Um, first here it says autopilot, which is pretty misleading. Um, we've got autopilot, auto, auto orientation, which is just headless mode, which means no matter which way the quad is actually facing, your stick is always going to move it relative to you. So forward's always going to be away from you, no matter which way the quad is actually facing. Uh, that's a pretty standard mode in most quads these days. And then here it says auto landing, flight assistance. Not sure how that's flight assistance, but what that auto landing means is when the battery dies, it just slowly loses power and lands. There's no button that you can press to do that. Uh, so that's basically, again, that's like the LVC, the low voltage cutoff. Pretty much every quad does that. When the battery's about to die, it just slowly powers down and lands itself. Um, I would not call that autopilot in any way. It's not flying for you. This doesn't even have altitude hold, so you know, you've got to constantly manage the throttle to hold a hover. Uh, so I think that's really misleading on the box there just to get people to buy it thinking that it's going to be easy to fly. Um, and this is actually a very hard to fly nano. I mean, I've been flying for 10 years. I've flown dozens of these nano quads and this one is quite hard to fly. It just, it seems like it's, it's really slow to self level. So like you give forward stick input and it starts flying forward and then you let off and it's, it's very slow to make that correction. So it's, it feels like it's always like kind of overcompens or not overcompensating, but like undercompensating. So like you fly forward, let off the stick, and then it finally decides to stop. So it, it just, it feels very sloppy because it's not, it's not reacting quickly to your stick movements. It's, it's very slow and lethargic to make the changes, which just makes it really difficult to fly. Um, we'll go ahead and look at the transmitter here, which is just horribly awkward very very awkward unless you're a thumb flyer i could imagine it's pretty decent for thumb flyers but even then i still think it's pretty awkward uh the sticks are really smooth plastic so your fingers don't really grip on them even so i could i could see thumb flyers constantly having their thumbs come off of it but the shape is just so weird and then if you're a pincher I mean, with these short, big, fat sticks, it's just super awkward to use. Really, really weird transmitter. Um, but like I said, I mean, there's no buttons on it. The sticks don't even click. All you have here is what would be your throttle trim is, you know, turning off auto orientation, which is just headless mode. So I guess probably up turns it on and down turns it off. And then the rest of the buttons are your trim. So there's no rates. There's no flips nothing and now the reason for this big awkward shape of the controller is the the one cool thing is you can actually uh, store the quad here in the back um, it only has two AAA batteries too so you may go through batteries pretty quickly um, but you can store the nano quad inside the transmitter so that's that's pretty cool and you can just take this on the go with you and it actually has a hole in the in the bottom there. I don't know if you can really see that that's a hole. My camera doesn't want to focus in either. Uh, but that gives you access to the charging port. Um, so here we've got, I might as well show you, we've got the USB charging cable and a full set of spare props in there. Um, but this way you could put that, that charger through the hole in the body and then access the charging port and charge while it's in the transmitter. Uh, but you can't charge off of the transmitter. You still need a USB power source. So I'm not really even sure why you would need to have it in the transmitter while you're charging it. There's not really any point to that. I guess it's probably just they figured they could. They might as well. Um, it does come with a prop guard, uh, which if I recall, I think... Um, yeah, it looks like you, you can snap it on without having to remove the props. So that is, that is nice. It's pretty easy and convenient to, to put the prop guard on. So I might as well go ahead and do that so you can see what it looks like with the prop guard on. 
get everything out of the way there make sure it's all snapped into place so there it is with the prop guard on so that is nice there too that you do have you know for beginners that's going to keep it a little more protected and everything it does look pretty cool i like the the design but it's just a really awkward flyer um let's see getting on to more details it has a 100 milliamp hour internal lipo so you know it's built into the quad it's not meant to be replaced or swapped out or anything uh, that takes 28 minutes to charge off that usb charger uh, you get about, let's see, with the guard on, you get about three and a half minute long flights. And then with the guard off, you get about four minute long flights. And then there's a 35 second uh, LVC warning beyond that. Um, so the, the LEDs are going to blink for 35 seconds to let you know that it's about to run out of battery. And then when it does, it's going to do that auto landing. Um, it also auto lands if you lose connection and you know, turn off the transmitter or fly out of range. It's just going to auto land on you. Um, you can recalibrate it by holding both sticks to the outside corners. And so have it on a flat level surface and hold your sticks to the outside corners. Um, down outside corners. And that's going to uh, recalibrate the accelerometer, which is what keeps it level and gives it a nice hover. Um, oof. Um, let's see. Okay, I guess I could turn it on to show the LEDs. So we've got white in the front and red in the back. Um, but they're kind of like they're inside the body there, so you don't really see them from a lot of angles. So they're not, they're not overly helpful LEDs. Uh, like I said, there's only one rate. The yaw rate's pretty good, though. It does it spins at a pretty good speed, and it matches the pitch well. Um, let's see, anything else to say? There is a DX2, which is a, a micro uh, quad, so it's a little bit bigger than this, but it has the same design. It kind of looks the same. Actually, I have it here. I might as well pull it out and show you. Uh, so it's you know quite a bit bigger. Uh, but has that same sort of look to it. And it has a much better controller and it flies much better, but they're different protocols. So you can't use the DX2 controller with this, which I was hoping would happen so I didn't have to use this controller. Uh, but they seem to be different flight protocols, which would also explain why that one flies so much better than this one. Uh, so if you're thinking about buying one of these, I would definitely suggest the DX2 over the DX1, and I will be reviewing that tomorrow, so uh, tune in for that to see the better version. But if you've already gotten this one, uh, I'm sorry for you, and you know, at least hopefully I provided some information to help you understand what all the controls are and stuff. Uh, let me check my notes to see if there's anything else to say about this one. Uh, nope, that looks like that covers it, so let's go take it for a flight. Alright, this is the flight review of the Sharper Image DX1 Micro Drone. This is actually a nano quadcopter, not a micro. And it pretty much, I don't know, it, it flies awkwardly. It has no rates, no flips, no altitude hold. So in a market full of nano quadcopters, this thing just does not quite match the competition. The controller is super weird and awkward with these short, fat thumb pads. Really the coolest feature is that the quad can store inside the back of the transmitter there. Otherwise, I mean, the LEDs are kind of lackluster. It looks cool, and really that's about it. It flies really weird, so we'll see what I can do here with, without crashing it, hopefully. It's just like, it's really slow to self-level, so let me kind of get a hover going. Left stick, right stick. So you can see it kind of just drifts for a while before it levels itself out. Whoa, don't want to get stuck behind the washer. So yeah, it's just not very responsive to the controls, which makes it really awkward to fly, because it just, I don't know, it kind of just drifts around. It feels really floaty. It's got a good fast yaw rate, but it almost, the yaw rate's almost faster than the pitch because it's just so slow to get pitching and it's, oh, it just feels really washy or something. 
So just really awkward to fly. It feels like it's not doing what you tell it to do. Kind of get a funnel going there. But yeah, like I said, there's no other rate, so this is this is what you get, and there's no flips, so no stunts of any sort. It does have a headless mode, and that's about it. I guess if you, if you keep it pretty calm like this, it's not too bad, but I mean, normally with these nano claws, I can fly nice circuits around the kitchen, and this thing, I'm not... I don't even know if I want to try. I'm going to end up losing it behind stuff. It kind of was getting a circuit going. Yeah, I definitely feel like I think the yaw rate's a little too fast for the way it pitches, so I end up over turning. It's just a really awkward flying little thing. So, yeah, with all the competition out there, I'm not really sure what reason you would get this over another one unless you just have the other models from sharper image and you just wanted a consistent look i mean it does look cool i definitely like the design but flight wise ooh, just a little weird and no features this is like absolutely zero features well headless mode which is worthless so Get a decent funnel going, actually. That's not bad. Kind of had to work my way into it. But once I got it going, that was a pretty decent funnel. Alright, well, I think that was really all there is to show, so let's take it in for a landing. Touch and go. Come on. Oh, LVC. Oh, come on. I want to get that landing. It's just, it's so washy in its pitch movements. It's hard to make little movements and get it over the landing pad. I end up over over correcting. There we go. Not too great of a landing, but at least I got it on there. So yeah, that's the Sharper Image DX1 Nano. I don't know. I mean, it looks cool, but I just don't like the way it flies. And it has no features at all. I mean, not even flips. That's just really weird when, you know, there's so much competition out there in this market. Um, anyway, if that does interest you for whatever reason, check the video description for a price and purchase link. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.